Hi, my name is Paul Seal from CoachAddict.co.uk. Uh, welcome to this little video where I want to show you how I'm going to uh, put my Clean Starter Kit onto Umbraco Cloud as my new version of CoachAir. Uh, so I've been adding some features to the Clean Starter Kit lately. I'm happy with the features and now I actually want to use it for my website. So I created a free trial project uh, earlier today. Um, all I did was I just went to umbraco.io, I logged in and I created a new project as a starter and then um, chose the free trial, 14 day free trial and that's where I'm at. I've done nothing since creating that. So once I've done that, what I'm going to do is clone this. So I've clicked on the arrow next to live there, clone the project and you get the clone URL. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to put it into my GitHub folder. So what I want to do is just open this in terminal. And then once my terminal opens, I want to do git clone and then paste that in there. So now that uh, it's prompted me for my username and password, it's happy that it's been able to pull that down. So if I go into the folder, I should see I've got a project. So this is my Umbraco Cloud project. This is what it looks like now. It creates a folder called Umbraco. So if we go back, I'm just skipping through that. So in here, we've got the git ignore and everything like that. We have this special Umbraco file um, open with VS Code, I suppose. So this special file here. So if you wanted to, you could rename that folder and you could rename that project so you could have it called whatever you want, but I don't really care on this. So I'm happy for it to be called Umbraco project. Um, and then inside that, this is just a, like a very basic Umbraco uh, 12 website. So there's nothing added. I've not even gone through the installer yet or anything. So what I want to do is um, I want to add the package called clean. Double click the project file and that will open it in VS uh, Visual Studio. We could if we wanted to not even bother with the uh, Visual Studio. We could just use the command line but why not? We can. So I'm going to, before I run this, I'm going to do magic, manage NuGet packages for a solution and I'm just going to browse and search for clean. Clean by Paul Seal and clean.core. So for now, I want to tick uh, clean by Paul Seal version 3.11. That's the uh, that's the new version that I've done. It's got some dependencies on clean.core, contentment, and that's it. So this is going to install that onto this project. And by install that, what I mean is it is just literally going to update the project file. To have that dependency. So now if I run this project, sometimes it is better actually using the command line because you get to see uh, the output from the command line like when it's doing the install, when it's adding the starter kit and things like that. But yeah, here we go. So clean starter kit straight away has been added. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to use this for code share from now on. Uh, now that I've added it, uh, let's just log in and just have a look. Just going to sign in with my Umbraco ID. There we go. Don't show this tour again. And here we are. So, there's the basis of my new website. Um, I'm going to keep all the articles and everything for now, um, but what I want to do is I just want to do a change to the settings. So we've got clean here. Um, what I want to do is as soon as you've already in installed clean starter kit, just change that dependency to clean.core because you don't need it to reference clean anymore. The only reason why it referenced clean was when it um, needed it for the initial setup when it installs 
all of the content and settings and things like that. But after that, you can just directly uh, put a dependency on clean.core. So I should be able to just run the site again. I've, I've updated that dependency, so now it's just pointing at clean.core. Uh, clean.core should still have a dependency on contentment as well. So yeah, this is the starter kit. Um, I've done it using the block list. I've got an image row, a video row. Uh, with the video row, you can. This is just an image, which is the preview image from YouTube. And then when you click on it, it changes it to be the iframe. So quite like that. Um, I've got a code snippet row with a copy button. So on my code share site, I'll be able to share my code samples and things. And I've got a little carousel as well. Um, and I plan on having like a developer diary as well, which if I show you this, actually let's create it. So we've got article list, I'll go dev diary. Um, save and publish this. And then let's just add an article. Um, my first diary entry article date do it now so the author is me uh, so what's this about well I need to add some more categories I can do that later um, main image I don't really know what to pick so I'll just pick oh there is a diary one a notebook or something somewhere uh, that one and I'll just say this is my first diary entry using clean starter kit there we go and that's dated I'll, I'll put the time and date in as well because I want it to be that type of thing. So instead of tweeting, I'm going to just start putting content on here. And you're probably wondering what what you're on about. Is it not just a blog post? Well, if I go to Dev Diary and I go to Content and Visibility, I can do Show Full Article on List Page. Say Yes. Save and Publish. Now, if I go to Dev Diary, Podcast... Oh. Right, I need to hook that up properly. So that's actually looking for blog posts and not dev diary posts. So I need to work out what's going on there. But if, say if I did that on the blog, to make that same change on the blog, content, visibility, say yes, you'll see that actually the, the content from the item gets rendered out here. And that's what I want. So on my dev diary, I want it to just be like a dev diary page and you just see all my latest little small snippets and it can have anything that you like. It can be a video, it can be a, a little gallery, but there'll just be small little posts that aren't don't really warrant a blog post, but just give an update about what I've been doing a little bit like tweeting. So I'm going to use it for that. Um, I might need to just make some adjustments to it so I can use it as that. Um, yeah, so let's uh, push this up to cloud. So I think that is all. I'm just going to stop the site. Um, just do a clean solution should stop the site. And then I'm going to just push that up. So I'll go back up here and just right click. I'm using Tortoise Git git commit master it, oh it's going to complain i need to add this <laughs> have this every time but good thing with the, i don't know if you knew about microsoft messages uh, error messages but if you do control c it actually copies the content of the error message uh, and i'll show you so it's copied the content of the error message in here so now i can just do what it needs me to do so if I open the command line and I just do git config global add, now it will be happy. I don't know what that is, why that needs to do that every time. It does annoy me, but what can I do about it? So again, do 
tortoise get git commit there we go so it's got everything that it needs to push up for me um, yeah let's just select all so installed clean starter kit commit that and then push it So that will now push it off to um, Umbraco Cloud and it will do its magic uh, build and deployment that it does behind the scenes. A uh, good thing is when you do it in here, it will actually report back what's happening so you can see what it's doing. There you go. Finally, after a while, it says deployment complete. I'll click on close and then I'll go back to the browser and then if I just um, go to the content part what I want to do is I want to push this up to Umbraco Cloud um, the site's not running so I just get it to run again just can do that from here There we go, so what I want to do is I want to queue for transfer. Changes have been queued and I want to do the same for media as well. Queue for transfer. So now uh, if I open a transfer queue, I've got all the media and I've got all the content and I just want to transfer it to live. So hopefully when I did the deployment, it would have deployed all of the schema files that um, if you've worked with usync before it's like the usync config files these are uda files i think they existed before uh, usync was a thing and i might be wrong about that but um yeah so it's transferred all of those things it's told the database on the other end when i did the commit before oh yeah this is all the settings so you need to um create all of these doc types and everything like that so now that's happy so let's just go into the project in Umbraco cloud go to the back office and let's see hopefully we should have a content tree and we should have my site running on Umbraco cloud already just wait for it to log me in here we go so let's see does the site work There we go, lovely jubbly. So, yeah, that's all sorted. All the content is on there. Um, it was pretty easy to get that put onto uh, Umbraco Cloud. There's hardly any work involved whatsoever. So, yeah, this video doesn't need to go into more than that. It was just um, cloned down the Umbraco, fresh Umbraco Cloud trial project. Um, add clean starter kit as a package run the site that installs it change the reference to clean.core instead of clean so that it, when it deploys it out to the other version the other environment it's not trying to add the content that way to, and confuses things so I think that trips some people up um, and then we're away I've got to fix this issue about the dev diary I think uh, all it is, is it's probably just the way I'm getting the, uh, if I go into the code, it's probably just the way that the latest articles is getting the content. So I think I'm looking for the, yeah, I'm looking for the first or default. All right. Yeah, I could do this a better way. Latest articles. 
yeah. What I might do is just, if the current page is an article list, then use that. Otherwise, do it this way. Because I'm not going to use the, the dev diary on any other pages. So um, I'll do that. Um, that's about it, really. Oh, I could set up the... One thing I haven't done is I've not set up the error page, so I could do that. So this is the error page. If I go into app settings and then we go to CMS, we've got content. If I just do this, I can do error 404 collection. Um, do that and do culture default, I think it is. And then content key. And then just paste that key in there. That should now have set up my 404 page. So uh, that keeps wanting to save the solution file that I've got this open in. But I'm not too bothered about save, saving the solution file at this point. But yeah, if I uh, update that now and go to here, refresh, go on the front end. And then if I do that, I should. Yeah, take me to the page not found. Great, that's worked. Uh, like I say, I'll fix the other thing. I'll probably put a change in for clean start kit so that you can, so you're not tied to it just being the first set of articles. Uh, but yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you do, click like, subscribe to my channel, um, and I'll be sharing more videos, and uh, I'll be writing more blog posts, but it's going to take me a while to manually update all of my blog posts in the way that I want them edited. I could do some sort of import, but I don't want to. All right, take care. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.